Are investors overly worried about the trade story? Kind of where are we in mm. this narrative? Indeed. Um, investors are definitely worried. So if I take a step back and look at global ETP flows, we are at 205 billion um, inflows year to date. So well below where we were at this point in 2017, at the same point well above 2015 and 2016. So it's clearly a different year versus yep. last year, but people are still investing. At the same time, if I unback it, how this trend and how this number has come along, uh, there are clearly very different phases. So a very strong January, probably one of the strongest we've ever seen. Yeah. And then obviously with February, the sentiment has changed. And we've been into that situation for quite some time. Where now. is money flowing? So money is flowing and has been consistently flowing into US equities and developed market equities. At the same time, we've seen other areas which have begun to suffer, emerging market equities being the main one. Um, so we've seen a great a stellar 2017 after years of pain, um, a good start of 2018. Now we've started to see outflows. Just a couple of stats to get you excited on that point. Um, so last week was the biggest weekly outflows uh, since 2013. Just to give you an order of magnitude of how big. Is the delta? Is that so? So, I, I want to know what the what the second derivative is doing. Is that number accelerating, decelerating? It may be a higher number, but is it kind of That's slowing fair. down or speeding up? It seems to be accelerating again. We're getting into the summer lull, uh, yep. so it will be a bit difficult to decode. Uh, that second derivative to your point, but certainly something is happening. May was also a strong monthly outflows. If we look at slightly longer term trends, um, the biggest outflows um, over the last year and a half. So I would say that's certainly an area to your point around China and Asia uh, that we continue to remain supportive of from a macro perspective, but that from an investor sentiment perspective is moving. Uh, the other one obviously is Europe. So European equities um, have recorded uh, 17 and a half billion outflows year to date, um, and sorry, over the last three months. And those have been the first three consecutive outflows months since 2016. And there's a lot happening there under the bonnet in terms of defenses versus cyclicals or at country level. How much of this is down to kind of what's happening with the currency? So it, it does make quite a big difference. If I'm a dollar investor, uh, I don't know, I'm going to pick the DAX here. The DAX is down in local currency, the euro, 4% year to date. It's down nearly 7% in dollar terms. There's definitely an element there, and we do see that in emerging market debt as well, where flows have moved from local currency beginning of first part of the year, first quarter, to hard currency now to capture the dollar rally. I think for um, European equities specifically, there's an element in terms of FX. Uh, probably the biggest driver is political risk, which somehow is back on investor yep. readers. Um, and again, if I look at countries, biggest outflows from Germany, um, followed by Italy. So again, you do see that, to your point, it's very different from last year. And the last couple of months are starting to get, it the headlines are starting to get under investor's skin. Hey, Germany has had political risk, clearly, and we, and we know that. Italy's had political risk, and that, that may be more pronounced. But, but the Germany story is also a trade story as well. And the German auto sector in particular is very exposed to this trade story. Can I, can I put those two trends in different buckets, do you think, or do you think they're the same story? Mm. I think they're probably very heavily connected, so I will put them together. At the same time, if I look at our macro view, we don't believe that. That for now, uh, the trade discussion is at risk of derailing the macro picture of global growth that we still see. We acknowledge that in 2018, that macro picture is driven by two forces, the US and China. So if you think about 2017, we saw this growth picture, synchronized growth coming through all countries. It's not the same this year. Um, so I think trade will remain obviously top of investors' minds, to your point, for quite some time, as long as those two engines continue to perform. Yeah. Um, I think overall we still see a lot of positive, um, like think about earnings, yeah. think about GDP uh, forecasts, we have our own BlackRock proprietary GPS, it continues to remain positive in those two areas. Is, so is, the, is the Europe more, po I, I, I read something yesterday talking about the fact that the European earnings story looks really quite positive at the moment. Is um, that going to start to manifest itself? Is that going to be something that, that actually drags money back into Europe? 
I think it's going to be tough to see a big shift throughout the summer because, again, if I look at how investors have approached us in terms of changing their portfolios, beginning of the year, three phases again, beginning of the year, very strong um, changes in asset allocation to make money and yep. capture opportunities. Then second half of Feb till May, June, big de-risking, significant reduction in level of risks at portfolio yep. level. You've seen inflows in goals, in diversifiers and so on. I think now we're seeing a bit of a pause. I believe investors are looking at all these news coming through. Volumes are a bit thinner, uh, okay. actually are significantly thinner. Um, so again, bad news can skew flows very heavily. My impression is that the big reallocation has happened through Q2 and now we're going to be a bit in a wait and see mode. So to your point on European equities, seeing a major reversal and it's huge unlikely. inflows throughout the summer, um, it's unlikely yet, um, you know, I truly believe investors should remain invested.